Hello and welcome to Holland City Connection. I'm Amy Vanderplug and we have a wonderful program for you today. As you can see, we are outside at Windmill Island Gardens and we are going to have a tour and our tour guide is Elisa Crawford. She is the event coordinator here out at Windmill Island. Elisa, thank you for having us. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for coming out. Well, now for our viewers, tulip time in the city of Holland is just past. But as we can see, Windmill Island is still beautiful. It is. There are still tulips to be had here at Windmill Island Gardens. It's just gorgeous. It's really nice to enjoy them as long as possible. Well, and what we're going to see today is that there is a lot of beauty and much reason for the residents of the Holland area to come to Windmill Island. We're going to investigate just a little bit, just enough to get you interested in coming down to the island to see for yourself. First of all, Elisa, I want to ask you about the title Windmill Island Gardens because the term gardens has recently been added to the name Windmill Island. Talk to us about That's that. That's correct. That's a new addition. And for any of you who come here, you will see a brand new sign at our front entrance done in gold lettering. It's just gorgeous announcing the new name of Windmill Island Gardens. And it really reflects everything that we have to offer, which as you look around, you see beautiful flowers everywhere. And we realize that more and more our visitors come and they're struck by the absolute beauty that's, that's to be found here at Windmill Island. So we've added the name Gardens, hoping to attract a new segment of the audience that really is looking for beautiful flowers and gardens, which we can offer here. Wonderful. Now, before we start talking about the specifics of the island, let's talk about your outfit here. Sure. Um, and you, your role at Windmill Island Gardens, you are the event coordinator. And as you will learn today, Elisa wears several different hats here at the island, quite literally several yes. different hats. But at this point, we're talking about your role as event coordinator and your dress. That's correct. Um, in the spirit of just finishing tulip time, many of us are still used to wearing our Dutch costumes. And this is something that our tour guides are wearing all the time as we give tours here at Windmill Island Gardens, especially through the windmill or as we play the street organ or run the carousel. So I happen to be wearing a vintage uh, Dutch costume that's actually been worn by three different generations here in Holland, Michigan. So that makes it very special. Yes. I've added um, a new addition here, which is a Dutch um, purse that was very popular and worn by many Dutch women. Um, I had the opportunity to help design it. And so I absolutely wanted a windmill in the scene, which is fun, but it's um, very much like a lot of the 18th, 19th century purses that women would carry. It's all beaded. That's beautiful. And handmade. So that's how women would carry their treasures. Uh -huh. And then I have a special pair of wooden shoes that is painted with our windmill. This one. This one, which is nice. And the story is that I carried these all the way over to the Netherlands and I wore them there for a special occasion. And they were really amazed that an American would come with her own wooden shoes to wear in the Netherlands. So, well, and stories. a little bit later in the program, we're going to talk about why you have been traveling back and forth to the Netherlands. Yes. Mm -hmm. But right now, uh, talk with us about this particular building that we're standing in front of. Absolutely. The building that's behind us is called the Post House. Many people kind of confuse the name a bit when we try to explain um, you know what this building is they confuse it with a post office, office right <laughs> but the name actually is post house and it refers to a wayside inn that you would have found in the Netherlands you know back then when you were traveling it, it took a long time to travel from place to place mm -hmm. because you were going by horseback or carriage and you needed to stop and rest for the night and so this would have been a wayside inn that you would have stopped at stayed for the night maybe gotten something to eat and then headed on your way the next morning wonderful so it's a centuries old um, building that actually replicates one and um, that would have been from many years ago you see a sign on the front there it says post house dating from the 14th century mm -hmm. so we rebuilt this in 1965 when we opened um, windmill island uh, that year and it gives people just some idea of a little bit of Dutch architecture and what you would have found during that time. Right, so if visitors come to the island they can go into the post house. Absolutely. And, and it's set up similar to what it would have been 
And this is really, you know, where we recommend that you begin your journey here at Windmill Island Gardens. You enter the post house. So we do offer an orientation slideshow, which is 12 minutes long. I really recommend it. I love it every time I watch it. Um, it gives you an idea of what windmills and tulips, you know, why they're such an important part of Dutch culture. Mm -hmm. So we offer that here as well as amenities, including restrooms and also some Dutch artifacts on view. So it's a great spot to kind of begin your journey right here at the Post House. Okay, well, and thus we have begun our journey here at the Post House. And now if you stay tuned, we're going to go over and look at the organ. We'll be right back. We've moved now over to the organ house, and Elisa, this is, as you've described, or are about to describe, considered a street organ. Exactly. This is a street organ, and I'm just going to step aside so they can get a good view of it. Ours is called the Four Columns, and as you notice on the front facade, it actually does have four columns, two larger on the ends and two smaller in the center. And it is very special because it was given by the city of Amsterdam in gratitude for the role that Americans played in liberating the Netherlands uh, after the war. Mm -hmm. So it, it's really a special symbol of all the effort that many of the people, including from this area, gave to the Netherlands to help uh, the, the Dutch over in Europe at a very difficult time. And now you have been to visit the Netherlands many yes. times, yes. and you said this is a very typical um, type of organ that you would still see there today. Correct, very typical. I've had the chance to see some at the Open Air Museum in Arnhem and if any of the viewers have a chance to get over to the Netherlands, I highly recommend going to that museum. It's uh, their National Open Air Museum. There's much to see there and they have a very, very large street organ that takes up an entire wall and then in contrast to that they have a very small one called the Little Rose which is quite portable and they could take out into the street and play for uh, parades or special occasions. So ours is a nice size one, um, not too large, and not mm -hmm. too small. We still play it for our visitors. That was um, going to be my next every question. Every single hour that we're open here at Windmill Island Gardens so that they can actually listen and hear the wonderful music that, that this plays. And it's interesting the method that's used to play it. Originally it would have been hand cranked so the um, person operating it really got to work out, you know, turning the crank to make mm -hmm. the music. Um, but it plays using uh, kind of like player piano books. So it's an accordion folded book, maybe about this thick, okay. that rides through on a track and it has to read the holes that are in the music books and then the keys will know when to play. So there's so. not actually a person playing the organ. No, the, the organ is really doing the work. Um, you know, like I said years ago, the person would have to hand crank it to, to create the power mm -hmm. to make it work. But it, it's really delightful. And when you look around all, all sides of it, you can see not only the pipes on the front here, but also drums and cymbals. And, you know, it's really quite festive. So it's a great thing to not only have here, but also see in the Netherlands, right. too. Talk with us a little bit about how it's painted. Um, is this typical and is this the way that the organ originally came to us it, here? It is quite typical. Um, you know, obviously over years, you know, it's had to have maybe a little bit of restoration. Um, I was just looking at the scene on the front and it, it's really delightful. I don't know if you can um, get a close up or not, but you've got a, a very typical Dutch windmill here on the left a very typical Dutch boat with the wide oars on the sides and then a wonderful Boerderij, our farmhouse in the background, you know, of course, with the water in the front. Um, just a very delightful Dutch scene and details all over. You know, if you really start looking, there's just so many things uh, on this organ to look at. It's just a, it's a wonderful piece of not only an organ, but also art. Right, exactly. Thank you so much for that description. Now, I think that our next stop 
is going to be the windmill? It could be. Stay tuned. All right. We'll <laughs> be right back. we have moved to the windmill and also as promised Elisa has changed hats <laughs> quite literally this is your Miller's outfit right and one very important and proud moment for all of us in Holland is that you are the only oh you're gonna have to help me with this Dutch now. certified Dutch certified Miller, Miller in North America and that is a designation that you worked very hard to get and I was very grateful for the opportunity um, when I asked or when someone asked on my behalf, a colleague of mine in the Netherlands who ended up becoming my teacher, they weren't sure what to think. An American woman who runs a windmill in America and she wants to go through our program. So they thought about it for quite a while, but I was very um, grateful that they agreed that uh, they would allow me as one of the first overseas students to go through their program and normally it's about a two-year program. Some students study up to 10 years before they take the exam. It's actually two exams you have to take. Uh -huh. A proof exam to prove that you've learned enough. And then also a final exam, which I just took in September of 2007. So I was able to pass. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Wonderful. And we have talked with you on this program about that before. What's important for our viewers to know is that this windmill doesn't just sit here and look pretty. This is right. a real working windmill, and that's what we want to hear about. Exactly. When we received this windmill in 1964, it was with a lot of negotiation and effort. And so we made two promises to the Dutch government. The first is that we would keep it open as a touring mill, which obviously we still do today. And the second is that we would keep it as a working grinding mill, which we also still do. We grind wheat into flour. Mm -hmm. And matter of fact, I was just grinding on Sunday and on Tuesday of this week. So... We still grind quite a bit of grain into whole wheat flour, and then we sell it here on the island. Wonderful. Now, you said you, you were grinding on Sunday and Tuesday. Mm -hmm. What do the conditions need to be in order for you to grind the wheat? Sure, that's a great question. Before I had our new sails, which I'd like to also talk about, mm -hmm. um, I needed 20, 30 mile hour per wind, and, and that's really quite a strong wind, right. um, and it has to be a steady, stable wind but just to turn them without grinding about 10 to 15 miles per hour. Okay. So I was able to have that type of wind and got some grinding done to make some more flour because mm -hmm. we sold a lot at Tulip Time, which is wonderful. Yeah. But now with the sails, I'll be able to reduce that wind level to a lighter wind speed so that I can grind in lighter winds and grind more often. Now, is it that the windmill did not have sails or they, they were in disrepair? What, how did Great this question. come about? Um, our windmill to Swan had some sales initially when we opened in 1965 to the public and I think also in 1966. But during that time, um, Dieg Maidendorp, the Dutch millwright, was here to train our new millers. It was um, Mr. Scrotenbohr in the beginning, Maynard, the first year, and then John Hoovel took over in 1966. And so under the Dutch millwright's tutelage, um, we were able to operate with some sales. But I think it's been many, many years since Deswan has really flown with sales. So it was one of my dreams, and Freedom Village made that possible, the residents of Freedom mm -hmm. Village. They raised all of the money, and just recently we had the sales arrive from the Netherlands, and we got them put up, and now I can turn more often with brand new sales. It's wonderful. It's like a real, true Dutch windmill, the way right, it should be. Right, right. So if guests come to see the windmill, obviously they can go inside, but then what, what are you showing them when you're in the windmill? Sure, they would be able to take a tour all the way up to the fifth floor, 
there's actually seven stories in this windmill and from the ground to the very tip top of the highest blade it's 125 feet or the equivalent of a 12-story building uh -huh. so it really is a large mill but you would get to go up to the fifth floor which is the grinding floor and you can actually see the millstones and where that grinding takes place Great. so it's an exciting tour and I really encourage all of your listeners to come out and, and take it. Mm -hmm. How much uh, wheat does it take to grind the to flour the and where do you get the wheat from? Sure, we work with King Milling in Lowell and so all of the wheat is grown by West Michigan farmers. I love the fact that it's grown locally. Right. And I can grind uh, an average of about 250 pounds per hour, although I have ground more uh, depending on the wind. Mm -hmm. so. And so then is the flour for sale year round? Um, it depends what my supply oh, okay. is. It, it's all weather dependent and how much I've been able to grind and um, how, what the demand is as well. Like I said, at Tulip Time we sold quite a bit and so I was running low on the last day of Tulip Time, but luckily I could grind the very next day. Good, good. Yeah. Well, thank you for, for switching gears and, sure. and changing into your miller's outfit. This I do is, hope to see everyone here at the windmill this summer. Yeah. That would be wonderful. This is another great um, part of the island that that residents visitors anyone can come and see yes okay and just a reminder holland residents are given free admission if you have holland on your driver's license oh wonderful i'm After glad you brought that tulip up time so it doesn't take effect during tulip time it's too busy then you want to come at a, a slower time when we can spend time with you um, but please come on down, show your driver's license at the ticket booth, and we'd love to have you come spend the day with us. Good. And I guess also residents can just walk in, right? They can bike in. There's a right. great road all the way around the island. It's great for jogging or um, just taking a nice walk. In the winter, I love to cross-country ski around it. So. Wonderful. Okay, well, we have another stop to make because there's more excitement on the island. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Well, we've come back across the bridge and now we're standing in front of the Celebration Pavilion. Yes. This mm -hmm. is just a fabulous structure that has been on the island for a couple years now? A few years now. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us what this is used for. Sure. It's a 50 by 90 structure, so there's a lot of space in there. But it's used in many different ways, um, primarily for wedding receptions. Across the way, we have a beautiful wedding gazebo where the ceremony can take place. And then behind us is this space for the reception. We can seat up to 300 here, so we can do any size party from 30 to 300. We also use it for things like company picnics, business lunches, class reunions, graduation open houses, but primarily, as I said, wedding receptions, which is wonderful. Well, let's talk about the structure itself, because first of all, I think that these sides all open up, is that right? That's exactly right. Behind us, um, you see several doors uh, with windows in them, and all of those are openable. And that's the nice thing about the structure is that it's very, very flexible. It can be all the way from a completely open air facility. So it's got a tent like feel to it, which right. a lot of brides like. Mm -hmm. Or it can be a closed facility if the weather is inclement and you're completely safe inside and you can have a wonderful party still. And then the other unique feature is that it has a hard floor surface. Correct, which makes it convenient for the dance floors for wedding receptions. Great. Really works well. So now are, are all the tables and chairs out here or how does that work? Um, we do have tables and chairs here on site and so for example if a bride has a wedding here um, we actually cover it all and we do all the chairs for the ceremony, we do all the tables and chairs for the reception, we do all the setup and the takedown. So what's nice is that you not only get a venue for your event but you get an entire beautiful island here which is a great setting for an event such as a wedding. 
Now you're talking a lot like a wedding planner. Is that another <laughs> hat that you have to wear it is. out here? Um, I also coordinate all of the weddings. I'm excited to say that we have 30 weddings that will be taking place here this summer oh my at Windmill Island Gardens. And we already have several booked for 2009. So I handle those too. And uh, it gets to be a very busy time with many, many weddings taking place. But what a gorgeous setting to have an event like that. So how does it work if there's uh, brides out there or, or future brides? Because it sounds like you need to book this quite Yes, far you do. In it books up very quickly. So you're saying that uh, you could do anything from actually having the entire wedding ceremony here and the reception yes. or just the reception. Just the reception. And if any brides are interested, just visit our website at windmillisland.org and there's a separate wedding page that you can visit and see photos of some events uh, such as weddings here and then it's got my contact information so you could get a hold of me and I'll set up an appointment with you and we can talk about all the details and I'll show you our facility. Great. So is this limited to Holland residents or can Not at all. We have Chicago brides, Detroit brides, and Grand Rapids brides. They're coming from all over to have a beautiful lakeshore wedding here in Holland, Michigan. Oh, that's wonderful. So this was a decision of the island to add this or, or kind of Windmill Island and the city of Holland? How did this come about? Um, our manager at Vandenacker had this idea for some time and it took, uh, it took a while for it to really grow and take root. Um, city Council approved it, and so we're rolling into our fourth summer now doing weddings here. Wonderful. It's been a terrific thing for all of us. Okay. Now, behind this celebration pavilion mm -hmm. are the Dutch shops. Yes. Let's talk a little bit about those. Are those open year-round? What kinds of things are in the shops? They're open during our season, which is from the third Saturday in April through the beginning of October. Okay. And it's a wonderful experience to walk through and to see all of the Dutch items uh, that are available. Everything from Delft, Delft wear to wooden shoes, of course. Even the clogs that I'm wearing right now came from our shop, which are straight from the Netherlands, to Dutch food items, which I like, and also including the flour that we grind at the windmill. Mm -hmm. So a whole variety of, of items that our visitors can shop for. And so the shops are open seven days a week during your season? Is yes. that how that works? Yes, they are. Okay. Uh -huh. And so again, Holland residents, if you show your driver's license and it says Holland on it, when you That's come the through the ticket booth, we'll you can free get admission, in for free. Except during tulip time. Except during tulip time. Okay. Well, tulip time has passed yes. now and the uh -huh. island is still gorgeous with all the flowers. So, And what happens after the tulips are done blooming? Then we plant annuals and we have beautiful annual flowers I have been all the way the through the end of the season. Beautiful. Yes. Wonderful. Well, Elisa, you are a very busy, busy lady out here. You wear lots of different hats. Um, you've been a wonderful tour guide for us today. Thank you and so much for coming. I know <laughs> that you and your staff provide tours and lots of information as, as guests come out here. We certainly do, and we'd love to see all of you come out here to Windmill Island Gardens this summer. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for having us. And thank you for watching, and we hope that we've given you a good taste of Windmill Island Gardens, enough so that you want to take your family and come out and check it out. It is a very beautiful and really hidden gem. Very much. Right here yes. in the city of Holland. Yes. For Mac TV and the City of Holland, I'm Amy Vanderplug. We thank Elisa Crawford for being our tour guide today. Thanks for watching. I want to take just a moment on a personal note to say that this is the last Holland City Connection program that I will be hosting. I have accepted a position in the state of New York and will be leaving the Holland area, but I wanted to just thank, first of all, all of you as viewers who have been watching this program over the past three or four years. I've had a wonderful time bringing information and people to you into your homes. Hopefully you have enjoyed the time that we have spent um, learning more about this city that you live in. 
I also want to thank the city of Holland for giving me this opportunity because it's just been fantastic for me personally and it's been a lot of fun. I'd also like to thank Mac Media because they have very uh, steadfastly brought this program to you um, and we certainly appreciate your continued support. Again, I'm Amy Vanderplug. I thank you so much for supporting me over these years with Holland City Connection and all the best to you. Thank you.